Ultimately, it's not our job to tell Canadians what is good or bad information, but to provide them the tools and the resources to, when something comes at them, to make a choice on their own and to say where this information is coming from, who is behind it, and what their objective is. Head to the polls this October. And because of that, we created a new task force, bringing together our top intelligence and policing agencies to identify threats to our election and prevent foreign interference. And part of it is putting together a group of senior bureaucrats who have a lot of experience managing government. The Critical Election Incident Public Protocol is a clear and impartial mechanism to respond to incidents that could undermine our ability to have a free and fair election. For the first time ever, our security agencies will provide direct security briefings to key members of national political campaigns. These multipartisan campaign officials will be able to receive regular briefings, including classified information as appropriate. And that will be comprised of the Deputy Ministers of Justice, Global Affairs, Public Safety, the National Security Advisor, and the Clerk of the Privy Council. Okay, and we've already heard from some of the critics suggesting that, uh, at the very least, the optics are not good with this, this committee deciding when to inform Canadians that there may be something, some kind of a foreign threat that undermines the system when you have uh, bureaucrats inside the federal government who answer to cabinet ministers deciding that this is something they want to go public with. This is not about refereeing the election. This is about alerting Canadians of an incident that jeopardizes their rights to a free and fair election. It could be the old-fashioned way, hostile intelligence services collecting or stealing political, economic, commercial or military information. Our top story is focused on a controversial procurement contract. It's between the RCMP and Sinclair Technologies, a communications company that is partly owned by China. That combination triggered fears about a possible risk of espionage targeting Canada's National Police Service. Or it could be foreign agents providing illegal funds to support candidates or bribe officials. Or it could be cultivating personal or financial ties to coerce or manipulate diaspora. On this Friday night, new claims of foreign interference. The Liberal MP accused of accepting support from the Chinese government the Prime Minister's senior staff knew. It will be up to this group of uh, you know, highly respected civil servants to make that decision. Uh, it will be based on information and evidence provided by the security agencies. What is really important to note is that in no way whatsoever does this announcement limit Canadians' freedom of expression or free speech. What we're talking about today is foreign interference activities that try to manipulate the conversation. What we saw and what we have seen around the world is incidents where what looks like legitimate domestic actors are actually masquerading. It's actually foreign actors masquerading as domestic actors. That's not always easy to detect and it's done specifically not to be easy to detect. As my colleague mentioned, these are, you know, covert operations to try and manipulate Canadians.